Hey everybody, welcome back to Hard for Games. We are beta questing today. You guys voted that we beta quest Banjo Kazooie. And for those of you unfamiliar, beta questing is essentially taking a look at the game to try to find leftover and beta elements that the developers may have left in the game for whatever reason. So again, my name is Tony. I'm Anna. Anna is my wife. And Anna, why are you here today? I'm here because I am very familiar with Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie. From the ages of about 12 to 14, it was my life. Mm -hmm. And Tony is very, very unfamiliar with these games. Yes. I think he probably played about an hour of them. And that's only because I forced him to when he was immobile after hip surgery. Yeah. You know, sometimes you guys vote on games and I haven't played them, so I have to bring in some experts here. So that said, we hope that you all enjoy, and let's go ahead and get started. For those of you that are unaware of the story, Banjo-Kazooie is about a bear and bird combination, and Banjo, the bear, his sister gets kidnapped by Gruntilda because she is ugly and wants to be hot. And she becomes hot when she steals away his sister's beauty, I guess? She's youth? youth? I think it's more like more youth, youth because she's really like 11. Yeah, it's kind of weird, kind of confusing. But she does if you game over. Or if you quit. Yes, it's real hot. But uh, we got a good comment about it that said, uh, many a wee lad had his sexual awakening from the game over sequence with hot Gruntilda. I have to agree. When I used to see that when mm. I was little, I, I got confused. <laughs> All right, now before we dive into actually hacking Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie, let's talk about some Project Dream references. Now, for those of you that are unaware, Project Dream was kind of a really alpha version of Banjo-Kazooie. Basically, it was an adventure RPG for the Super Nintendo, and then it went to the N64, and it was all pirate-themed. But eventually, the main character went from a pirate to a bear and kind of became Banjo, which was like a weird switch, but they, they liked it. And it went from this sort of like open 3D world to a 3D side scroller. And then it became this sort of open sprawling 3D platformer, ultimately what Banjo-Kazooie became. So it had a lot of iterations. You may recall that there's a, a picture on Banjo's wall right? And it's him kind of trotting through a forest, and a lot of people think that it's an unused level called Fungus Forest. But it's actually not. It's an image of him in that 3D side-scrolling beta build of the game. And it's an image on Banjo's wall, which is kind of nice because it's like he's reminiscing about times past. Yeah, it's actually, like a memory. I had never really thought of it that way, but that's kind of cool, which also makes you wonder why there's just a big picture of bottles. <laughs> above his fireplace. <laughs> fire. like, what Bottles is like a father figure slash like deity to Banjo. <laughs> <laughs> Banjo is a simple, simple bear. He's <laughs> a simpleton. Exactly. <laughs> Silly old bear. But that said, you know, a lot of people had always wondered about like Fungus Forest, right? Like, oh, was there any way we could kind of still play this, this level? And you kind of can, because keep in mind that this game was developed by Rare. So was Donkey Kong 64. And there's a level called Fungi Forest in Donkey Kong 64. Now, is it the same? No. Is it reworked? Probably yes, because there's a bunch of different characters in Donkey Kong 64 that have all, all have unique abilities and they'd have to rework how the level structured, blah, blah, blah. But the general aesthetic, I'm assuming, is probably the same. Yeah, and if you play Donkey Kong 64 and have played Banjo-Kazooie, they are very similar in visual style and music. Mm-hmm. Very similar. Now, there's also another Project Dream reference, but it's in Banjo-Tooie. So, in Banjo-Tooie, there's a level called Jolly Roger's Lagoon that's pirate-themed. But it's also mostly underwater, which is kind of annoying, as we all know. Yes, that's horrible. And there's a bar. You go in, there's a drunken pirate in his own room lamenting the fact that he once had a dream, but a bear took it away from him. He looked a lot like you, actually, he says to Banjo. He also says, I were in this fine game before he passes out in his chair. Mm. And you have no idea what he's talking about if you don't know about dream, but 
I was thinking maybe like in a past adventure, Banjo had foiled him, but I didn't know what he was talking about. Yeah, so. yeah, he foiled him in development, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> what else is funny in this bar? <laughs> there are some very flamboyant, like, frog people behind the bar telling you about Wednesday's grab a sailor night, and uh, there's an, some interesting choices on the menu. It's not Salty an dumplings all, no. and other things that totally went over my head when I was 12 or 13, you know, but I still thought it was funny. So it, it, there's a couple different levels to banjo, I'd yeah. say. <laughs> there's, some, there's some layers. There's layers. Unrelated to Project Dream, but we just thought you should know. First thing that we can actually dig up from the code here is a, a test zone. And there's just a bunch of different sized ramps. And it's probably to just test how far you can walk up before sliding down realistically. But there are a couple of like odd nuances with it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you levitate high enough, there's actually some notes. That you can get. Yeah, that you can get. And there's also some just random flowers just kind of floating up in the sky. So there's actually a beta menu feature that was apparently showcased in the American manual, but was actually never actually in the game. So what this feature is, is you press start, and you know, you kind of have your save and quit and all those other options, but there's an additional one that's exit to Witch's Lair. So basically, you know how you start a level in Banjo-Kazooie, and what you have to do is, if you want to leave it, you have to go to the warp point at the beginning of the level. With this, you could just press start, select exit, and you could just exit the level, and that's it. That would have been really nice. Yeah, because even when we were getting footage for this, you know, not even really playing, just getting footage, we were like, oh, okay, let me tread back to the, you know, the beginning of the level and this and that. With the cheat, it's just boom. Next up, there is a bunch of unused music for Banjo-Kazooie. Yeah, so the first one that we're going to showcase, this one's called Advent. And I guess there's a lot of theories as to where it might have been used, but let's take a listen. So the next track we're going to listen to is Mumbo's Rain Dance. When people think about unused elements in Banjo-Kazooie, the conversation always goes to Stop and Swap. Mm -hmm. Now what Stop and Swap was, was a series of items that you could get in Banjo-Kazooie and then swap out your cartridge, put in Banjo-Tooie, the cartridge would recognize, due to the onboard RAM, that you had these items, and in Banjo-Tooie, you could get new features and movesets and those sort of things because of the secret items you got in Banjo-Kazooie. And at the end of Banjo-Kazooie, they teased these. Mm -hmm. If you got all 100 jiggies, they gave you some clues about the eggs and the ice key. And they drove you insane. They drove me insane as a kid because the ice key was behind, I think, ice, like clear ice, mm. or maybe bars. And I tried everything and I could not figure out how to get this ice key. And you know, a key in a game is like, it's a key, there must be a door, there must be like another yeah. place I'm going to. Like, I need this key, give me this key, I need it. There's I don't even know what it's for, but give it to me. Obviously something going on with this key. And it's, yeah, and, and like, am I stupid? Am I missing something? What's going on? Why can't I get this key? It's taunting me. Yeah and I just never figured it out. I didn't know about Stop and Swap. What eventually happened was, is that Nintendo had modified the N64, so the amount of time you would have had to swap cartridges was drastically reduced to like one second. To one second. You'd have to like smash your N64 with your cartridge <laughs> and then... It would have been a massacre, a bloodbath <laughs> of N64s. <laughs> horrible, horrible destruction. Rare ultimately canceled Stop and Swap but they brought some of the items and some of the features in Banjo-Tooie that you could just get kind of in that game without Banjo-Kazooie, but all the items were still in Banjo-Kazooie. Right. They just didn't tell you how to get them, but they also had cheats for them, mm -hmm. which was kind of weird, but they never told you what the cheats were. So here we are 
years later, stomping our asses into the ground, <laughs> typing out a long, long cheat phrase that you could have never figured out. Point is, you were finally able to get the ice key. Yes. Finally able to get these I got to close eggs. that chapter of my life. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That had been open for half, half of my life ago. That is a stop and swap. Not really hacking the game per se, but still some elements in there that you can mess around with, basically. Mm -hmm. For those sort of completionists and purists, I suppose. <laughs> Let's jump into Banjo-Tooie now. Four bottles. Four bottles. Opening, bottles dies, right? Very unexpected. Very unexpected. Very unexpectedly, cut down in his prime. Oh yeah, oh yeah, never saw it coming. Get it, because he's nearsighted? Oh. Now, one of the reasons I imagine why he died at the beginning is because there was a two-player option, a sort of a pseudo co-op, but you're actually not trying to help each other. Versus. <laughs> Essentially what this was, was a mode where bottles his evil spirit, rather, could possess different enemies to harass Banjo. As yeah, you which is weird because Banjo and Bottles had a good relationship. Had a good relationship. Maybe things went sour towards the end. Bottles did hate Kazooie, though. Yes. Kazooie had a lot of enemies. <laughs> she was salty. This feature was basically fully fleshed out, but it got towards the end of development. This was in the debugging phase, and they ju it just never made it past that. So, uh, according to a, a rare revealed YouTube video, they just kind of turned the mode off. But you can bring it back with some Game Shark codes. I really like how even in the cutscene. Banjo was like, wait, why are you evil? And he was like, I don't know. So you can have a second player in this game. It was so transparent. <laughs> <laughs> there was no like thought behind the story in any way. Oh dog, I'm coming to get you. Slowly. <laughs> no. Slowly. Oh. You know, they, they kind of have just their basic attack. It'd be cool if you could also have the enemies like jump. Yeah, that would be cool. Oh man, girl, here I come. Oh, you just did the Briegel Bash. Yeah, the Briegel Bash is one of the stop and swap features that was kind of carried over into Banjo-Tooie. And Kazooie is a dragon, which is what happens when you get the ice key. Ah, yes. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Kazooie. She deserves it though. Yeah, she's a real bee. So I guess this would have just been like, if your little brother wanted to play with you, and you'd say, sure, I know a good two-player game. You can attack me while I, like, play 99% of this game by myself. I think this would have been cool, honestly. Apparently they brought back a sort of a similar feature in Perfect Dark, where you can die and then play kind of as the AI. Let's talk about boobs a little bit. <laughs> Why not? So, Honeybee. 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 Mm -hmm. This isn't really a beta element per se, but I thought I'd squeeze it in here because it's something you can find in the code. Essentially, Honey Bee, she's well endowed. Sure. Sure. And she has a full texture under her polygons that you can't really see. No, because she's classy and she puts her polygons on. That's right. She puts her polygons on. But in the code, you can find the full texture and it's basically just two big old pixelated knockers. On a bee. B boobs, not size B, not B No, cup. they're like D boobs, but they're, they're on like, a B. They're like, they're D on a B. That didn't sound appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the subplots, I guess you can say, of the Banjo-Kazooie universe is the Jinjos that you have hmm. to save. The little cute, innocent dragon bird? Lizard? Lizard birds? birds? I don't know. They're super cute and helpless. But in Banjo Tooie, they've expanded and multiplied to different houses of different color coded Jinjos. So the red Jinjos, the green Jinjos, black Jinjos. 
And there was, originally, also, the Grey Jinjo family. And it's in the game, you can see that their house was demolished and they were all killed. But, they were all killed because Rare decided to scrap them. But I found it, you know, kind of funny because it's, you know, just kind of that rare humor that, you know, instead of just getting rid of this, let's just say they all died. So, here's an image of their full house, and here's an image of a gray Jinjo. So basically, they were like, eh, we'd have to create more levels for these, we don't want to do that. Let's just say their whole family and children died. So hey, that's our beta quest of Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie. We hope that you all enjoyed. And like always, let us know in the comments below. Vote on which game you think should be our next beta quest. Doesn't have to be N64. It can be if you'd like it to be, but we tally up all the votes and we figure out <laughs> what we're going to be doing next. Uh, also, this time around, you may have noticed that the footage looked a little bit different, right? Uh, it's because I finally got a PC instead of a Mac. I still have my Mac, but I got a PC, and I'm using Project 64, which makes it a little bit quicker to be able to figure out the codes and stuff. You don't have to input them very tediously. So let me know in the comments below as well whether you like this crisp-looking imagery or if you prefer kind of the RGB N64... The classic. The classic look of our, our previous beta quest. Also... Now that I'm working off of a PC, hopefully I'm not, uh, I'm going to read a comment here. A leftist trend boy virgin cuck. Definitely a virgin though. Oh, yeah. Yep. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for clicking that notification button so you know when our videos are coming out and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like and a share, and we will see you guys next time.